Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. We are sitting out in the cold here, and we are here where we seem to be every off season, left wanting and disappointed. And there's calls out there to blow it up let's just blow it up and start let's just hit the reset button let's just start over let's trash and get rid of Dak Prescott let's fire Mike McCarthy there's Sean Payton out there and things you know I've been watching the Cowboys for a long time and I can't say that I know what the right answer is Apparently, the Joneses don't know what the right answer is, and I'm not sure that the talking heads know what the right answer is, because they told us from the beginning that we were going to suck, that we got no chance in hell, that we would be a total disaster. But it seems like we're stuck in that purgatory of being good enough to compete, but not good enough to get there. And see, actually, you know what I want to do? I'm, I'm going to give you my solutions. Here, I'm going to give you my thought, and I'm, I'm going to listen to a little bit of, um, I, I like the Rich Eisen show. I like Rich, Rich Eisen because he's not the young yelling, you know, I hate the Dallas Cowboys. At least it seems like it's real conversations. Now, this is Rich Eisen talking with Chris Long. And, and you know, you, you have to listen to Chris Long. He's been an NFL player. You know, he's got a Hall of Fame dad. And uh, he's got his own rings and things like that. And let's get his take on this. And then, uh, then we'll come back to it. Did not win and did not reach the NFC Championship game because of fill in the blank. What do you got for me? Oh, man. Um I think they wore down in the second half. I mean, we could start with Dak. I mean, Dak throwing two picks. You, you got Mr. Relevant. You've got Dak. And, you know, fill in the blanks. Who, who's the guy who makes two big mistakes? I mean, like, we've been waiting for Purdy to have this multiple interception game, and it hasn't happened. And he didn't, he's not spectacular. He didn't play spectacular yesterday, but what he did is he made the throws he had to make, and he, he, he avoided making those big mistakes. And Dak made those big mistakes, and then, a ball game on the road against a really elite defense like that where the both, both scores are going to be in the teens. These are enormous, enormous plays. And, you know, one of them being backed up, um, the whole thing. And then, you know, like Diggs didn't pick the ball off mm. in the red zone. Like you had to count on Dallas creating turnovers. Right. And they didn't do that. So they turned the ball over. They didn't they create didn't turnovers. They missed their opportunities. And then I think on a short week, they wore down in the second half. I read a tweet at 8.43 p.m. that Dallas had them, you know, uh, they were 13 carries for 28 yards, the Niners were. I mean, getting the run game going was tough sledding. But once they did in the second half, it was 71 yards rushing. So, you know, Monday night game on the road. Then they got to go all the way out to the West Coast. I think eventually um, it jumped on their back. And, you know, Dak not just throwing two picks. And he almost hit Greenlaw for a pick six late That's in the game. That's right. You know, it's, it's just – and coming in this game, I said it's like Dak played really, really well against the Bucks defense. It was not that good. Okay, like um, – and the week before, he had maybe the worst game of his career. It's like the inconsistency. Um, and it's the inconsistency of this team. And, and when Pollard went out, it just changed the game. And so I, I, I think there's a whole host of reasons – that you could point to, but you got to be wondering if everything's on the table for Jerry. Well, I mean, then, everything. Let's everything talk about that. What table. What is the everything? If you're because I said earlier, I mean th th that means coach or quarterback, if not both. You know, the coach it, it, Sean Payton is sitting there on Fox. He's standing there. He's talking. He's talking to everybody. Yeah. He I mean he's available. Um, you'd have to cough up a one to New Orleans. I don't know if New Probably Orleans more. would make Dallas cough up more than that for him. But you'd have to cough up a one for him, and then he's got to tell you what he thinks of Dak. Uh, I, I, you know, but Dak's not going to go anywhere to begin with. You know, if you draft a, a, a quarterback, I'll, I'll give you the floor on what you you do if you're Jerry. So I don't know. I, I honestly, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, we speculate a little bit. I know Dak. Um, there's a big hit next year. 
so I don't know the, the the logistics of moving him. But if I were if I were Jerry, and you know I, I want to win a championship, you know I'm not getting any younger. I'm looking at this thing and I'm saying like we have literally seen every iteration of this deck um, kind of era, and it all ends kind of the same way, right? Like they, it ends in the playoffs, early exit, or they're disappointing and so uh, you know like I can't point to that offense and say there was a ton of stuff that Dak didn't have um, that he needed I mean you know I was on my show this morning with Kyle my brother talking about how good a job Tyron Smith did on Nick Bosa Mm -hmm. you know like they got the best player blocked you've got multiple playmakers on offense obviously Pollard goes out with an injury but these mistakes have nothing to do with that. And, uh, and I'm just not sure. Like, Kellen Moore, you talk about him like he's, you know, a head coaching candidate one day. He's this mastermind. Well, they've got that. They've got this, this coach that's won a Super Bowl. They have, you know, their franchise quarterback in place. And it all just seems to end in the same place. You know, so I would hit the reset button. That's just me. I, you know, like, and I know some people don't like that word because <laughs> there's a whole lot of ways you can go with it. But, um, I think it's time to see what else is out there. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel. Okay, should the Cowboys hit the reset button? Reset button means you're you're tearing it up and starting all over. Couple of things here. Couple of things here. And this is my thoughts. Again, I'm just Joe the fan. I'm sitting at home just like you guys, just like our team is right now, trying to figure out what the problem is. When you say reset, it means you get rid of all the the high-priced players and and you start over. Well, I'm going to give you one thing that should give you some hope. The Dallas Cowboys team going into the season was the third youngest team in the NFL. It's the third youngest. So you still have guys that are on their rookie deals that are still learning you actually have quite a bit of talent that's there which is the thing this is the problem for the cowboys is they've had enough talent to compete but just not enough talent to compete and win it all you can say what you want to the dak prescott yeah i agree he you can't have those mistakes i i wonder about michael gallup if they were on the same page on that because Michael Gallup looked like he ran a lazy route. It looked like he was supposed to come back. He let the defender jump. He was just like, he's just standing around. It's like, I know you're supposed to be someplace. And I know it's not just supposed to be kind of lackadaisical in there. Okay. And I'm not trying to throw him under the bus, but the Cowboys this season, this season was set to lose long before that game last night. The problem here is the problems that we talked about during training camp. The Dallas Cowboys took a number one receiver and minus it off their roster and replaced them with nobody. The Eagles went out and got themselves a really good number one. They had Devontae um, Smith, who was a good receiver, young guy coming up, and then they got a veteran, a good player so now you've got two really good ones and you got a great offensive line the dallas cowboys who don't use one of the things around and, and whether okay here's the here's the reality with dak prescott love him or hate him you can't leave him right now and if you're dropping him dropping him for what you got a draft pick that's in the the mid-20s you're not getting a franchise quarterback in the mid-20s. That means you got to trade up to try and get to one of the top-tier ones and hope that he is actually a top-tier when it works out. The Sean Payton idea. Well, let's get rid of the head coach and get Sean Payton. Well, you're going to have to give up a number one, and they said they wanted at least a mid-round number one, which means your number one is not what they're looking for. So you're probably going to have to give up more, which means you're not going to be able to get more talent. And you're not a team that goes out and believes in free agency. So you need the draft picks. 
And blowing up a team that's one of the youngest teams that's out there makes no sense. Are you going to get rid of, you know, the young guys you drafted like Sam Williams? You know, you've got your Micah Parsons. Are you going to give up on that guy, your digs? I, I don't think that you are. Now, there are players that will be blowing up. I, I can't imagine, you know, it, Tyron Smith did play good against Nick Bosa yesterday, but I'm not sure that Tyron Smith is in the long-term plans anymore because of health issues. Zeke, 3.8 yards per carry. Zeke's mind is there, but does not have the burst anymore. Short yardage, pass blocking, he's great. Maybe you get him to take a big pay cut, but you need more explosion to go with Tony Pollard. Your quarterback, it's too big of a cap hit. You got to at least wait one more year. And you have to also find somebody to replace him. Because we went the route of saying with a wide receiver, let's get rid of him. We'll just draft Jalen Tolbert and make him the guy. See, the thing is, is you can't build a team through free agency. You have to have the basic pieces. But you have to supplement it with free agents that are a few that are going to get you over the hump. You got to get a few premium ones. We saw that with the Rams getting Von Miller and Odell, who's healthy. The Cowboys before training camp. This is the list of people we brought in after we lost. Lyle Collins, Randy Gregory, Connor Williams, Cedric Wilson, and Amari Cooper. Dante Fowler. Six snaps, six snaps yesterday. James Washington. One drop on the season. And Ryan Null. That was your outside the house free agency. You need guys that are going to be able to do better than what Michael Gallup did this year. You're going to need guys that are going to be able to catch the ball better than Noah Brown did. You need a tight end who's going to be a security blanket. So when we say blow it up, what are we talking about? Are we just saying just get rid of the quarterback? Some of these games, <clears throat> your defense – you got a defense that's coming together. But even with that, there's still some places where you need some help. You need, you know, Van Der Esch. You know, I think right now he, he he's made a mark on the team. You want to bring him back? Anthony Barr, stopgap. And that showed yesterday. Cornerbacks, you're going to need some more help. You got to figure out Jordan Lewis and Anthony Brown. Offense, you've had an offensive line that's shuffled around. And that's where I say, you know, Tyron Smith, when healthy, is great. But the amount of time that you've missed over the last few years, it's not capable. It's not, it's not good. You need a better left guard. The bottom line is, if the Cowboys want to compete with the juggernauts, the San Francisco's that say, we need another running back, so we go out and we get Christian McCaffrey. The Philadelphia Eagles that say, our draft picks at wide receivers aren't good enough. Let's go out and get an A.J. Brown. And until we do that to give you know, guys that can get separation, guys that can hold on to the ball, guys that can run the right routes, then we're going to be still stuck in this thing of mediocrity and as far as chris long saying we've seen everything with dak um you know this iteration where the cowboys always end in the playoffs you know and you know one or two in it's not just dak at least the cowboys have been in the playoffs more with him in his seven years but it's the same thing the cowboys have had going for the last 27 years 
And this is where Jerry and Stephen Jones are so arrogant that they believe that their way is the right way. And we started this off this season listening to Stephen Jones saying that he doesn't believe that what the Rams are doing, you know, with signing free agents is the right way to build a team. Well, eventually the bills come due with doing that. And the Rams, they lost a lot of those free agents. And then a lot of those guys got old, you know, they're in the process of not having the draft picks to go ahead and start over. So they're, they're in purgatory at the moment, but they got a ring. And you can look right now and say, well, San Francisco and the Eagles, the two teams that are in the championship, both went out there and spent money on free agents to say, we need better talent on our team. One or two plays here and there by the talent makes a difference. And that's it in a nutshell. And until we do different, we're going to get the same results. The same results. I hope you guys tune in for our live stream coming up at 9. I'm going to check out my man Prime Time and Game Time. And uh, Misery Loves Company. And I'll see you later.